good morning, Remedy Church. We are so excited that you are here as a part of our online church this morning. We're so thankful that we could take the steps to not have to fully cancel service, even though we have uh, suspended our in-person uh, services. We still wanted to be able to have church because when Jesus came to establish a church, it wasn't about establishing a building, but establishing a people. And we're so thankful this morning that you're a part of that people uh, that we call the church. And Jesus said, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We're so thankful that you're here this morning. We've got just one uh, favor to ask of you today. If you're tuning in uh, to this broadcast this morning, if you will go to your uh, smartphone and if you're watching this service or this video on your phone today, just grab these instructions uh, just really quickly and then place this video on pause and go and do it real quick for us just so that we know who we're engaging with today. If you'll go to your text message uh, app and you'll type in 704 706 2877 as the recipient of the message. That number again is 704 706 2877. If you'll text the word here, H E R E, here to that number, we're going to respond to you. And if you'll just let us know how many are watching this service with you, whether your kids are participating with watching this video or they are participating with the kids' lesson that Brother Jeff is putting out on the Remedy Kids page, we'd love to connect with you and know that you're engaging with this material and the things that are happening right there from your own home. We're so grateful that you're here today. And once you've done that, we want to invite you just to join with us in worship and song. And we're going to have a message here in just a little bit. I'm so excited about what God is going to say to us today. Thank you again so much for being a part of Remedy Church, and we can't wait until we can come back together again in person. But for now, let's get ready to worship.
want to give you some information today as it regards uh, to your giving. If you would like to continue to give, and we want to encourage you to continue to give to your church so that we can forward the gospel of Jesus and the mission that all people would experience real love through new life in Jesus, we want to continue to give to our local church. And we're so thankful and grateful for your faithfulness. 
we want to let you know about a couple of options that you have to continue to give. Number one, I want to let you know that we have online giving available. If you'll go to remedychurchnc.org slash online dash giving, and it's going to be right here uh, below me just to let you know what that address is, and it'll take you directly to the giving page. It's going to ask for a username and a password. If you don't have that, don't worry about it. Right below that, there's a link that says donate as a guest. You can click that link. It's just one click and you are to the giving portion of the process and you can fill out your card information and you can designate where you're giving and how much you want to give um, as it pertains to designated funds or if it's your tithe or just a general offering. And uh, we'd love for you to visit that page and do that. There's also a place for a memo down at the bottom. And just so you know, we want to encourage each and every one of you to continue to give to your local church so that the, the mission can go forward. But we also want to let you know that as it pertains to online giving, there is a processing fee, which is standard across the board as you use your credit and the debit cards. There's a 3% fee. So if you want to make sure that the church receives the full amount of what you're giving, you want to just add 3% on top of whatever it is that your donation is uh, this week. So to cover that processing fee, we'll be so grateful if you do that. And the church can receive the full amount if you just add 3%. Works out to about $3 every $100 that you give. We're so thankful for you doing that. If you don't want to opt for online giving, uh, we're going to have uh, Sister Phyllis here at the, at the church this week. Uh, she will be here and the office will be open to you. If you would like to drop a check or cash off uh, in the black box, the door will be open between the hours of 9 a.m. and 12 p.m. on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. Again, we want to let you know that the office will be open on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week between the hours of 9 a.m. and 12 p.m. So if you don't want to give online, maybe some of you are saying, you know what, $3 is just too much to add on top of it. I'm, I'm kidding. Um, but if you don't want to deal with trying to figure out how to do the online and you want to drop it off, we want to make sure that you understand that we have other op another option for you to drop your check or your cash off at the church. We have the black boxes that are hanging, and there's a black box right inside the rear entrance of the facility. Just step in and drop it off. You can keep that social distancing, and you don't have to interact with anybody. And these are the options that you have to continue your giving so that we can forward the mission of Jesus Christ at our church. Thank you again for being a giver at Remedy Church. Hey there, Remedy. We're going to go into the message in just a second. But before we do, I want to let you know about a couple of things that are coming up. Number one, I want to let you know that we've received... Um, notification from our denominational leadership as well as our governmental leadership to not gather in any more than groups of 10 at a time. And so because of that uh, communication and strong recommendation from our denominational leadership, we want to let you know that this week is going to look much like it did this last week. And uh, we're going to be canceling our midweek service this Wednesday. So we will not have our regularly scheduled midweek service this Wednesday. In addition to that, we want you to know that on March 29th, we will have online church again. And uh, you should be excited about this. I know it's not quite like coming together with the people of God in the house, but we want you to know that you can gather people together in your house to participate. Be the catalyst for your family to worship together as a family in your home. And so this is a great opportunity to participate in the Great Commission. With all of this stuff going on, God has called us to be a light in these dark times. This is a great opportunity to do so. So we want to encourage you to participate fully in all that we have to offer. We're going to be uh, broadcasting some things uh, a couple of times this week just to make sure that you're staying engaged. You know what's going on. And uh, you guys are getting ready for next Sunday for online church on the 29th. So thank you so much for tuning in today, and we hope to see you uh, engage with us next week as well. In addition to that, I want to let you know again that we're starting a new message series on April 5th. Now, we don't know what that's going to look like, whether it's going to be in person or online, but I want to let you know that this message series is all about your purpose in God, how to step into that to be who God has called you to be. Great opportunity to invite those who are around you to come and participate and know a little bit more about the fact that there's a God who created them with purpose. And we're approaching Easter, so it's a great time to invite friends and family uh, to come in and be a part of the worship service. And we hope that you'll join us, whether it's tuning in live or over a broadcast or uh, in person, if we can have those services. 
again. We want to say to all of those who are uh, watching this broadcast or connecting with Remedy Church and the ministry that we have going on here for the first time, we want to let you know we're so thankful for you being here and uh, we worship together with you and, and I know that God is already moving in your life and we hope that you'll continue to connect with us but to be able to do that we want to take just a moment much like we did at the beginning of this video and we want you to text the keyword welcome that's w-e-l-c-o-m-e just pull out your phone and text the word welcome to 704 7062877 and we want to say welcome to Remedy Church. And if we were here together, I would tell everybody to give you a big hand for choosing to worship with you. Maybe we can do that in our homes, Remedy, that we can welcome anybody who's watching or engaging with us for the first time. And we hope that over the coming weeks when we can meet together in person again that you will be among those who come through our doors and find faith and hope in Jesus. But if you'll do the, us that favor and just text the word welcome to 704 706 2877. We're going to connect with you and let you know more about how you can connect with Remedy Church moving forward. We're so grateful that you're here today. We've got a great message lined up, and we hope that you gain something from it and that God speaks to your life. Listen into the message today. Wow. Here we are on Sunday after a long and winding week, and I'm glad that you could tune in to be a part of a service um, today. And I know that it's a little bit different, but I think the Lord has something uh, to say to us today. And listen, I want to take uh, today and next week and talk to you in the midst of this pandemic and let you know that no matter what's going on around us, that God has not changed. Come on and say that with me right where you are. God has not changed. And so for the next two weeks, today and next Sunday, as you know, we're having online church next Sunday. I want to drive that point home. So today I want to remind you, or maybe if you don't know already, if this is your first time engaging with God or his church, that God is faithful. Come on, let's be big participants today and say that with me. God is faithful. If you've got your Bible today, um, you can open it up and turn with me to Psalm chapter 33, verse 4. And here's what it says. It says, The word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. It's done in what? Faithfulness. And so I need you to hear that today, uh, that God is faithful. He's faithful. And we say that all the time, but do we really know what that means? Do we actually have a meaning behind that? Well, I want to specifically give you three things that God is faithful in today uh, to help you understand what we mean when we say that so that it's not just some Sunday school answer, but that you can live that out. Ready? Okay, here, here it is. Number one, the first thing that I want you to know is that God is faithful in his presence. You know, all my life, uh, my parents have been hard workers. Both of them have. Me and my brother uh, grew up, and we got to see that model by my parents. As a, as a matter of fact, specifically, uh, my dad worked a very uh, demanding job for basically all of my childhood as a manager at Walmart. Now, I'll say this. Walmart provided a lot of good opportunities for our family growing up in terms of provision and all that we were able to, ha to have in the later years of my time at home. But I can tell you right now that the one thing that always got us was the idea that dad always had to be at work on most major holidays. It's something that kind of haunted us every single year. But we just understood after some time and knew that we, we were probably going to have limited time with dad as, as the holidays approached. And as we grew, there was some aggravation with that. And um, it was in our family and even dad felt it. But... At the same time, we weren't mad at my dad for going to work. And here's why. We knew that the only reason that he was going to be gone and that he was going to be away from us was because his faithfulness in his work was providing all the good things that we were able to partake in as, as a family and as a household together. And so it's the same with God. In our walk with God... We've got to come to the realization that it's about, uh, about the same thing. Uh, now, holidays, brings, uh, they bring an intensifying feeling or desire to be together as a family. 
much like difficult times push us to a place of intensified desire to hear from the Lord. Many of us are looking for answers from God in times like these. And the difference is that we often have our faith extinguished or we feel abandoned when God doesn't uh, answer or he doesn't seem to be around when things are going chaotic and seem out of control. But here's what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 through 9. Here's what it says. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts. This is the, the, the word of the Lord. This is what he's saying. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. You see, God thinks and acts at a much higher level than me or you. We don't always see what he's doing, right? We can look around and we see what we see, but God sees the whole picture. And we've got to be mindful that he absolutely is working. There's no doubt about that. And further than that, we need to trust in him when he seems to go away. As a matter of fact, the last time Jesus said the words, I go away, something very, very powerful happened in the book of Acts. The disciples were upset and they were confused that Jesus left. And yet, as they walked in obedience through their disappointment, they were faithful to his word and they received a blessing and a promise that came in the form of the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for the power of the Holy Spirit today. And some of us are looking for a miracle from God, but in this hour, maybe God is calling you to be the miracle. He told his disciples that they would do even greater things than he had done, and he wants to work in and through us, church. I want you to understand that. And his faithful presence with us will shine through us as we're faithful in our work and doing things unto him. I want you to know today that his presence is all you need. Just one touch from the Savior and everything can change for you, for your family, for your friends. One touch from the author and the finisher of our faith and we can move to the next place in our story. It only takes one touch from him. His presence is everything that we need to move forward in. He's faithful in his presence. He told us that if we would seek, we would find. He said if we knock, the door would be opened to us. And I've got news for you today that if you're looking for the Lord, you will find him. The problem is, is we're not really looking for the Lord. We're looking for his stuff. But if you're looking for him, you're going to find him. He's not hiding from us, trying to play holy hide and seek so that he can gain some amusement from our lives that are, that, that, that are just vapor, really. They're insignificant in the matter of eternity. But God is not trying to put us in positions to lose faith, but to gain faith. And as we seek him and see his presence unfold in our lives, we can be confident that he is absolutely going to be faithful. Come on, somebody, and, and, and say it with me. He's faithful. One more time. He is faithful. Secondly, I want you to know that he's faithful in his promises. All throughout Scripture, God gives promises specific uh, to people and promises abroad to anybody that might believe. And there are promises that... Uh, that he's given to people and that he gave to people, but because we can infer from that promise that God doesn't change, and if the promise refers to his character and who he is, we can definitely and absolutely have trust in that promise for ourselves as well. You see, God doesn't want to just be around as we live our lives. He wants to be actively engaged with you and I in the lives that we live. He doesn't want to just know of us. He wants to be Emmanuel, God with us. To be with someone is to be actively engaged in what? In relation to them. You see, God is more than a life of, of, of monitoring and looking for uh, ways to disqualify us from his goodness and his presence. As a matter of fact, uh, he did the opposite. He gave himself, all of us, so that he could play an active role in our lives. So he gives us Promises. They're promises like Isaiah 40, verse 29. He says, uh, he, Isaiah writes and he says, He gives strength to the weary 
and increases the power of the weak. And right after that, in verse 31, that's followed by those who hope in the Lord or wait on the Lord, you know this one, shall renew their strength. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and they will not grow faint. And again, in Isaiah 41, a chapter later, he says, so do not fear. This is God speaking through the prophet. Don't fear, I'm with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is with you. Now, if you skip over to the New Testament, the promises don't end there. We see we're given some promises uh, here as well. Like in John chapter 8, verse 36, he says, So if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. If the Son sets you free, you're free indeed. That's a promise to us. Mark 11 and 24 says, Therefore, I tell you whatever you ask for in prayer. Believe that you have received it and it will be yours. If we flip on over to Philippians 4, chapter 19, it tells us, And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. That's Paul writing who went through a lot of different junk and he said he's going to provide. And there are so many other promises that I've not listed here that display God's faithfulness to our lives. And if we're being honest, many of us are living lives of hope in God but not confidence in God. He's given us promises and we declare that they're yes and they're amen when we're around our church friends and we're in the right setting. But when it comes right down to the fulfillment of the promises of God over our lives, for some reason, we end up losing our ability to believe in those promises. Anybody ever been there before? Uh, it doesn't happen like we thought it would or maybe it ends up be, uh, not happening at all or being different. Uh, than we thought it would look. And our, our hope turns to ash because God didn't do it like I thought he would. And maybe, just maybe, God is really asking us, do you trust me? Do you really trust me? Or is I trust the Lord the answer that you are supposed to give around the people where it fits just right? There's one truth about this whole thing that we're going through, that COVID-19, uh, if it hasn't served any other purpose, people are really having to recalibrate and reevaluate where their hearts truly are. We're considering things that we've not actually considered in quite some time with the busyness of our lives forcefully slowed. There's no sports. We're limited in the availability of our activities. We can't really go the places that we usually go and the places that we usually are. It forces us to consider some things in our solidarity and in our isolation. And the last thing that I want you to know is that God is faithful and just to forgive. Man, somebody ought to shout right there in your living room that you were forgiven by God. You remember where you were, but you know that there's a greater place for you and he's taking you there. Where are you today in your heart? You see, John 3.16 tells us that God sent Jesus into this world to provide a means for us to be forgiven and to have confidence that when we leave this life, our eternity is going to be spent with him if we give him our words, if we give him our actions, and we live according to his word, and we're forgiven of our sin. That's something we skip over, but we've got to consider that. Where are you today? He's promised it, and he's faithful to his promises. Come on, one more time, all over Concord, all over Kannapolis, Charlotte, Rockwell, Salisbury, Faith, wherever you are today, one more time, would you shout at the very top of your lungs, God is faithful. Come on, say it one more time. God is faithful. And I want to give you an opportunity today to respond. To respond to not a crisis, but where your heart is. It's as simple as the other things we've discussed today. And if you want to know this faithful God, and you want to give your heart to Jesus, if you want to know that you're going to heaven and that your eternity is going to spent, be spent with Him, I want you just one more time, and this is I know this is different, but if you'll take out your smartphone and you'll say, I'm going to open up my text message. I'm going to type the word saved to that number one more time to 704-706-2877. I want to be saved today. Now you might be saying, you know what, pastor, that's a great message. God's faithful. I've walked in relationship with him and with God for some time now. 
And I've already committed my life to Jesus at a certain point, but there are some things that I really need prayer over. Listen, I want you to have the, the opportunity today to receive prayer and to connect with the Lord. I want you to take just a moment and just text the word pray to 704 706 2877. Again, just pull out your phone, pull up your text message, just create a new message, and text the word pray to 704 706 2877. And we're going to be in touch with you and praying for you today. I want you to know that God is faithful for you. Listen, as we close out our time together today, I want you to know that God, listen to me, He's faithful. He's faithful in His presence. He's faithful in His promises. And we can put our trust in Him fully knowing that He's got this whole thing under control.